I am with Jill Weisenberger, a diabetes um, educator and um, a registered dietitian nutritionist. And um, the main reason I wanted to have Jill on today, besides that she is um, a friend of mine, is that she is one of the experts on the panel for U.S. News and World Report. And um, I just um, uploaded a video this week, um, just kind of a highlight of some of the various categories. But I was curious to know, just how did you get invited to be on the expert panel? Just over the course of a few years, I developed a relationship with people at U.S. News and World Report because they would sometimes call me for expert quotes on some of their topics. So I was very excited about four years ago. So I, I've been at four, maybe five years, I think just four. I was really excited the first time they asked me. I thought it was such an honor to be asked by such a prestigious organization doing something that gets so much publicity every year and people look for it and talk about it. Um, but the way I was asked is really, I just developed a relationship over time because I would answer their needs for expert sources. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, just being a published author is one thing that just gives you that street cred. <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah. That makes a difference. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and so there were, when I understand, there were 24 on the expert panel. I counted them up and that's how many I, I, I counted on the expert panel. Um, so <clears throat> walk me through the process of like, how, how does it all, like, when does it start? And just kind of give me a little idea of. Sure. Well, this year there were 39 and four of them were new. So four of them were brand new. They, so they took me more time because I had to learn more about them. The process is not probably what a lot of people think. So it's not like a lot of people sit together in a room across from a conference table or on our own computers on Zoom like, like you know, we're doing, but we're all really doing our own independent work. And we score them and we make comments. And then the the folks at U.S. News World Report tally up those scores, take the averages, take the, the comments, and put them all together in a readable, usable form for whomever wants to come to the, to the website to read it. So you talk about the different um, categories. You know, we have like the, the best diet overall, easiest to follow, uh, best for heart disease, best for diabetes right all of those right. different categories and so we rank them for each of those categories like also like safety wise and just a various number of things and they provide us with a background of each diet plus we use our own expertise so and and I did some of my own research as well, and I'm assuming that all of the other experts did too, because if I don't know very much about it, I want to see what are people saying about it, you know, what, one of the questions is how easy is it to follow? So I like to see what people are saying about that, because I have my own ideas of how it might be easy to follow or not easy to follow, but I'd like to see it from people who've already done it as well. Um, so I do some of my own research, and if there's anything I don't know, you know, I just try to find out. You can find out a lot of stuff by just um, like, like the Whole30 diet. You just go to the website of the Whole30 diet and whatever question you want, you're going to find it there. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's basically how we do it. There's just yeah. all this research available plus our own research and our own experience. So, you know, there's, the people on the panel are registered dietitians, they're nutrition researchers, they're professors, they're cardiovascular experts, diabetes experts, diabetes educators like I am. So it's, it's a whole mix of people. And we have various backgrounds right. in, in medicine, health, nutrition, that kind of thing, yeah. research. So overall, I, the best diets are Mediterranean, this year that was number one, and DASH and Flexitarian tied for second. Mm -hmm. We also had Weight Watchers, Mayo Clinic diet. I made a little list so I wouldn't forget. The MIND diet, um, TLC, which stands for Therapeutic Lifestyle Changes, Volumetrics, the Nordic diet. That Nordic one, yeah. Diet, and the Vegetarian diet. And there's something they all have in common, why they made the top 10. They're all based on a variety of foods, whole foods, and more plants than animals, every right. one of them. There's so much research based upon plant-based eating, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be organic or, you know, I mean, right. conventional foods are great, but um, it's just such a shame that they 
they don't, for one thing, they don't get the marketing that the uh, packaged foods do. So. Well, plant-based, I think, is just a confusing term to a lot of people. So I tend not to use that term because I think that a lot of people think, oh, she wants me to be vegan. She wants mm -hmm. me to be vegetarian. Um, but I use the term plant slant. Plant slant. Oh, I like yeah. that. I, I didn't come up with it. I stole it from someplace. <laughs> I'm sure I, I saw it. I think it's a blue zones thing. I think so. I think Plant, so. Plant, right. No, yeah. that's, a, that's a good point. And, and interestingly, too, how did the vegan, you know, diet score in many of those? Um, I don't remember exactly where it fell best overall. I do have that it tied for third place with volumetrics on long-term weight loss volume yeah but it's and well, i mean it didn't high for third place in best for diabetes yeah it, it didn't score i mean i think because it's so restrict it's so right. much more restrictive because remember this one of the things we score is ease of following exactly exactly right no wonder like the raw food diet would be like way down there <laughs> or a macrobiotic there was one on there though it was the Autoimmune A, A yeah. P, autoimmune program or autoimmune, yeah, yeah, something like that. So that was, is, was that one of the new ones? Mm -hmm. The new yeah. ones this year were AIP, GAPS, yes. which is also, a, um, I think that's a digestive one. Um, Noom, Noom is the right. uh, yeah. app, that's a weight right. loss app. And modified keto diet. It's the other four. The modify, oh, modified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had like three top takeaways for somebody that's, you know, new to seeing that best diets 2021. What would they be? Well, I, to me, the, the takeaways are there's room for personalization. You know, it's, as I said already, it's looking at what are all the healthy foods to eat. So we want to put the focus on what is good for us, what we enjoy, what we like. So put the emphasis on the foods that you like and then personalize them. So that would be a second one. And then the third one is really plant slant. Fish is very important in the DASH diet and in the Mediterranean diet, and it fits perfectly well with the flexitarian mm -hmm. diet. So all three of those have plant slant or plant-based, however you want to say it, and but fish fits in there. And you know that Dairy is very important in the DASH diet, and it fits in with the other two quite well. So it's in, in more ways than not, the three diets are really similar. The top three diets are really similar. So my three takeaways are focus on what you love, what to eat as opposed to what not to eat, personalize it, and plant slant. Excellent. Very good. Well, how can um, people get in touch with you if they want to uh, reach out to you? What's the best place? Uh, that probably would be my website, which if you have to spell my name, it's jillweisenberger.com. So I'll have it on the <laughs> yeah. And then also on social media, I'm Nutrition Jill. Nutrition Jill. All right. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, thanks so much, Jill. It's great my having pleasure. Great you. Pleasure. Yeah. Uh, yeah.